scanning for audio. Welcome to the Tin Dog Podcast number 99, The Twin Dilemma. I can sense some massive danger threatening the universe. So these are your prodigies. Once they have served me, I shall have no further use for them. That's it, of course, the children. Asmail, you old dog. I am no longer master of the combat, but I can still save my people. He must be faced by some unimaginable disaster. Giant gastropods. Now we're going to bring those two planets into orbit around Jaconda. What? The risks must be taken. This is not a risk, Asmail. This is doomsday. Oh, that's not colonization in front of this planet, but the universe. Nowhere would be safe from invasion. Before I talk about this most interesting of Doctor Who stories, I just want to apologise to anyone who's expecting to see me at the Hooverville event this Sunday. I'm sorry, but I'm unable to attend. But I hope that everyone has a great time, and that all the questions that people have got going about podcasting get answered by everyone else. So sorry I can't join you there, guys. Give my best to THE Colin Baker. And on the subject of THE Colin Baker, it's time for his very, very first story. The Twin Dilemma suffers a lot. It suffers at the hands of many things, and it would be easy just to list them all, tick them all off, and say there you go, without even attempting to find anything worthwhile to say about this story, a story which comes out on DVD on the 7th of September. As Doctor Who fans, if we look on our shelves, we've got The Caves of Androzani, the fifth Doctor, for many people the most remarkable of Doctors, the vegetable man himself, has just gone out in a blaze of glory, the blaze of glory that is the Caves of Androzani. Superbly acted, superbly crafted, superbly directed, the Caves of Androzani was a massive high. We'd just come to terms with the fact that Davison was our Doctor. And now, like the show so often does, it was time for regeneration. Now what they thought they'd do was what they'd done at the very beginning, during the first regeneration, which was have it almost mid-season. Well, not mid-season, just have it as part of a season. I can see the logic. Here's the new Doctor. We can be all excited about it. And then when he comes back, it'll be even better. Unfortunately, it's the last story of the season. The season when there's just no money left. So you can't make it look fabulous. You can make it look acceptable. And I'll be talking about the annoying slug monsters later. You see, regeneration stories are notoriously a little bit ropey. The Doctor's usually trying to find his feet. As a member of the audience, you're always thinking, is he as good as the last guy? And post-regeneration trauma has become practically an excuse for bad behaviour. But here we have what could be possibly classed as the worst post-regeneration story ever. I understand what Colin was trying to do with the character of the Doctor. I truly get it now. And thanks to Big Finish, I've experienced it at its best. I like the Sixth Doctor now. But then, well, I'm sorry. He starts off by trying to kill Perry. Not the most auspicious of starts. As a kid, I was just confused, angered, and, well, yep, I've said it once, but I have to say it again, because I was confused. I was confused. I truly was. I didn't know what was going on. Was this doctor just mental? I didn't really understand post-regeneration instability. I just saw some guy in an absolutely appalling costume trying to kill someone. Ah, yes, the costume. One of the extras on the DVD is the Colin Baker talking at great length about him and his and the other Doctors, all ten of them at this point, all of their costumes, and comparing and contrasting with his own. It's very nice. And it closes with, well, something rather magical. Somebody's rather painstakingly gone in and digitally changed what the Sixth Doctor is wearing. It's worth buying the entire DVD just for that. Not, as he says at conventions, what Neo is wearing in The Matrix. 
No, it's just a very, very nice suit. With a tie. The sort of thing that, well, Tennant could have got away with. Only slightly more classy. Yes, the costume doesn't have any blue in it because of CSO, and it's in ridiculous bad taste, but it's very well tailored. But like Colin says, the Doctor is supposed to disappear into circumstances, fix things, and then move on. Not what happens here. Here we have the brash, overbearing character that is the Sixth Doctor. And when the story finishes with, I am the Doctor, whether you like it or not, you know, many of us just didn't. I remember the fan reaction, well, I say fan reaction, I remember the completely over-the-top reaction, you know, the equivalent of a football crowd shouting, sack the board, as they tried to get rid of the production crew. This is the production crew who obviously kept Doctor Who alive when the BBC wanted to kill it. These were curious times. But enough of the obvious, the costume and everything. No, let's talk about the story, and sadly, talking about the story makes things even worse. The Sixth Doctor is... Not well, to say the least. And which is storyline A, and storyline B concerning the actual twins from the title. The problem is they'd hired a pair of actual twins, neither of which were particularly great at acting. Well, apparently they'd read very, very well the interview, but so had Matthew Waterhouse. And why did I even say that? Because I actually like Adric. We've been here before. Let's get back to the story. The twins are kidnapped by a guy who can quite clearly act, and they're taken away by what I can only describe as possibly Doctor Who's second worst monsters. This doesn't count any Candyman type things. You know, if you say his name three times, I've done that joke too many times, I'm sorry. No, here we have the strange, silver, birdy, beardy people. There was no money left. You can so tell. They look awful. The sets look awful. Everything is so of its time and not in a good way. I'm so sorry. My love of Doctor Who gets stretched so much when dealing with this particular tale. All of my reference books give this 1 out of 10 and 2 out of 10. It's not as bad as these marks suggest. It's just not great. Upsettingly for me, what happens is you watch this story and then you have to wait almost an entire year for more Doctor Who. This is the bad taste that's left in your mouth all the way to Attack of the Cybermen. And as a kid, it was a massive, massive wait. I say that the Silver Birdmen are the second worst monsters. Here, we are presented with possibly the worst. They are the Slug Men, creatures that can be defeated using salt. It's just awful. The costumes are definitively what people picture when you picture a bad Doctor Who monster. Okay, the sets don't wobble here, but the monsters make up for it. There's just lots of shouting, lots of wibbly-wobbliness. It's just awful. You feel for absolutely everyone in the story. You feel for Nicola Bryant when on the commentary she reveals that the original costume for this had to be altered in order for her to show more flesh. This is Doctor Who. This isn't Big Brother. You feel for Colin when he was presented with the costume. You feel for everyone who was in this, all trying to do their best. And people do try and put in a great performance, but in the end... It just doesn't work. So buy this if you must. We are completists after all. We love all Doctor Who. And the extras aren't that bad, although they're not as plentiful as they could be. There is no making of, for example. But the commentary is decent enough. And as always, the information text is great. One thing worthy of note, of course, is that Stripped for Action, the Sixth Doctor, is included here. And the Sixth Doctor comic book stories were perhaps the most surreal of all. A worthy addition to anything in your collection. A quick astrology. Fran Fairburn, born the 6th of May 1988, born between seasons 24 and 25 in the time of the 7th Doctor and Ace in The Ascendant. Episodes shown this day are The Faceless Ones, Episode 5, The Mutants, Episode 5, and The Girl in the Fireplace. Soon, a silver-clad smile will show its darker side. When taking a trip, remember that losing your luggage is not the worst thing that can happen at an airport. Take heed in a new place that one man's terrorist is another man's hero. A whirlwind romance affects you more deeply than your oldest friends ever thought. Do you know what makes people tick? Be sure you know exactly who to call in an emergency. Give a horse a good name and you'll have a friend for life. And so I'll leave you and I'll get on with working on episode 100. So until next time, or even if I've managed to meet you at Hoover's, And I did actually manage to make it there. Be seeing you. 
You have been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are all trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Contact us at tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk.